nobody could beat me in the boxing ring. My biggest fight was what was going on between my ears. Years ago, they used to think mental illness, they used to think you was a nutter. But it's not, it's a disease like alcoholism, it's like the drug addict, it's exactly the same. At first, I just kept it in. I can't go to somebody and say, you know, I'm crying. You know, I feel like killing myself. I'm Ricky Hatton. What are they going to think of me? They're going to think I'm a nook. You know, that's how you, you feel. And I think the best way is to, is to just get it off your, just get it off your chest. I have no fear of obtaining it now, to be honest. And I feel I'm still sat here today. It's because I got it off my chest. Ricky Hatton, one of Britain's best known sportsmen. A former world champion boxer, he won 45 of his 48 fights, earning over 40 million US dollars. However, Hitman Hatton became as renowned for his antics outside the ring as for those in it, enduring media scrutiny into his issues with weight, alcohol and drugs. Less publicised is his battle with depression, which for Ricky was the source of his problems. It's horrendous, you know, to be honest with you. It, it's, and you, you don't know why it happens to you. Because, you know, you, you sit down and you think, well, I've got my nice house, and I've got my nice gym, I've got three wonderful kids, and I've got this, and I've got that. But if you have a bad day, you have a bad day. Ricky was born and raised on a council estate in Hyde in the greater Manchester region of England. Once an industrial hub of cotton mills and coal mines, it has more recently been associated with the succession of high-profile criminal activities. But to Ricky, it will always be home. From the day I was born to, to present day, I've never moved. I've always lived within maybe an eight or ten mile radius. I'm very proud of coming from the the area what I come from and my friends today are the friends that I went to school with that have been my friends all my life you know so uh, yeah it's um, but it's been a it's been a good uh, good journey and I've always had lots of support from this area throughout his career Ricky trained in Manchester and had many of his fights here including at his beloved Manchester City Football Club he turned professional in 1997 and was unbeaten for over 10 years. In 2005, he faced one of the world's best pound-for-pound -pound fighters, Kostya Tsu, for the IBF World Super Lightweight title. Few gave Ricky a chance. But at the end of round 11, Tsu's team threw in the towel. That was the greatest win of my boxing career. I mean. Winning a world title is something you aim for. The first day you, you know you lace the gloves on for the first time, you dream of becoming a world champion. You know, and it's one of them that I was in Manchester in front of my home fans and such a power punching machine like Koshizu to sit on his stool and say, please leave me alone, no more. Probably we've had a lot of good nights in Manchester boxing about that. And I hope no one figures me for saying it. I'll probably nick it because I think that probably is the best, yeah. becoming a champion most people would say you're probably entitled to an easier one but I didn't you know I wanted to go unify the, the divisions I fought the other champion in the division then I got the ring magazine belt um, where, where I was recognized then as the number one in my weight division and uh, it's opened up many 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 doors for me I probably knocked out Carlos Miles with the greatest punch in my career big looping left up you know and um, it started getting America excited then, you know, and uh, that's what opened the door to, to other big fights. Vegas came calling, and in 2007, Ricky relinquished his belts for a unification bout against WBC welterweight champion Floyd Mayweather. Hatton started strongly, surprising Mayweather with a series of strong jabs. But the American fighter went on to dominate, in the 10th, Ricky was knocked to the canvas for only the second time in his career. He suffered his first ever professional loss, a catalyst for the onset of depression. Looking back now, Floyd Mayweather will arguably go down as one of the greatest of all time, but at the time of me fighting him, I didn't think I was getting beat, and I, 
I didn't feel appreciative of being in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. I thought, I'm going to beat you. And, you know, when I didn't, you know, having been used to all that winning and success, it hit me really, really hard. And it doesn't matter. People would say, well, it was Floyd Mayweather and, you know, you got your biggest payday, you know, so what are you, what are you complaining about? Well, you've got to know Ricky Hatton and the type of person and character I am. I went there not just, you know, to pick up my check and, you know, I went there because I thought I was going to beat him. And when I didn't, I felt like I let all the fans down that went over, the 30,000 fans went over to see me. I thought I'd really let them down and it was very hard over the full, next forthcoming months for me to actually show my face. I was embarrassed to leave the house. And this world champion, that the, the, the city of Manchester, or the, at the time, the, the, the country was so, so proud of me. So when, when th things were wrong, you know, and it, it does affect you, like, it affects your persona, it affects your confidence. At the time of when I got beat by Floyd Mayweather, you walk down the street and you, 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 the, you get the paranoia kicks in that you think, well, Ricky got beat, there's Ricky, there's Ricky. I thought everybody was looking and laughing at me. My head was going, well, I'm, I'm happy I'm not, I'm happy I'm not, I'm happy I'm not. I'd go from going in the pub, getting a few pints down my neck, and then, you know, a few more, and then before you know it, I'm sat in the corner crying in the pub, and everyone's going, look at that, that was, that was the champ. You know, and it's, uh, it was a very hard time for friends, for family, and just everyone in the local area, because I'm what fought so well of in this area, it was, uh, they could see me uh, crumbling and there's nothing I could do about it. For a sports person, because you're in the, the limelight, your name's out there more, you've got to deal with it in different circumstances. I mean, in the, in the, it's probably harder for you because you're having a meltdown Everyone sees it there in the paper, and everyone sees it on the internet. If you turn around and say, oh, I've got mental health issues, then people think you've lost the plot, you're a nutcase, you know what I mean? And that's why people are scared, I think, of coming out and saying, listen, I've got mental health problems. Despite his health issues, Ricky got himself fit enough to defeat Juan Lascano and Paul Malinagi before suffering his second career loss to Manny Pacquiao. He retired from the sport, which only served to compound his underlying issues. He suffered an identity crisis, having lost the very thing that had come to define him in both the public's eyes and his own. I think when I retired from boxing, I had all this time on my hands. You know, <laughs> this fella sat on the shoulder saying one thing, this fella sat on the shoulder saying the other thing. It, it really is hard. <laughs> Since I left school at 16 years of age, all I did was boxing. I, I, I carpet fitted for my dad badly, <laughs> you know, for the first few years before, you know, when I, when I first left school. But all I've ever known is boxing all my life. And then all of a sudden, I got absolutely destroyed by Manny Pacquiao. And I think, right, I, I knew myself, I thought, I've got to retire here. You haven't got it no more. You passed, you passed it. You've got to retire no more. Um, you've got to hang the gloves up. And that was the scariest feeling to me, because what do I do now? I've done this all my life. What do I do now? I don't know anything else. What do I do? And that's when it went down for me. I just started taking drugs, you know, once, once it really kicked in, when I really felt like I didn't care. And, I, you know, and that's when I tried killing myself. And I couldn't, I could never bring myself to do it. I used to sit there with a knife every night at my wrist, you know, whether I'd had a drink or whether I'd not had a drink, thinking, what have I got to live for? I can never have the bottle to, to go through with it. So what I thought to myself, I thought I'm going to drink myself to death. And my drinking went into overdrive, you know, where, you know, just every night in the pub, drunk, and that then led to the drug side of things. It was horrendous, horrendous time. Ricky checked into rehab at the Sporting Chance Clinic, the first place that he felt stopped treating his addictions as isolated problems, but as symptoms of his depression. Now 39, Ricky is managing his mental health issues with help from a psychiatrist. He's returned to the ring, but this time as a trainer. It's most definitely the next best thing because I look to myself at these young kids when I'm, who I'm training. At their stage of their career, I knew how I felt at my stage of the career. You know, you want to be a champion. You're trying to pay, pay your mortgage off. You're trying to pay this off. And I know how much it means 
to the ladder to train, and that's my little buzz what I get. Ricky Hatton is one of a number of elite sports people who suffer from mental health issues. Although the pressures of boxing professionally and the subsequent identity loss that came with retirement contributed to his depression, he's now using sport as therapy. Ricky is also at a point where he's comfortable talking through his issues rather than bottling them up, or indeed, turning to the bottle. If you get it off your chest, share it with people, I think, you know, you're going to be in a lot better place and people ultimately respect you more. It takes a lot of courage to turn around and say I have mental health problems and you're not a nutter, you're the most sensible person in the world if you get off your chest and tell people.